Hello and welcome to the Right Click Save NFT Roundup. This is the first in our new series of weekly updates from the crypto and NFT space. Today I'm with my little pet cat Calcio. How are you doing today Calcio? I'm good. It feels weird to be the other way around and listen to you intro but yeah I'm, I'm excited to get into the weekly news. Right, okay, so the first on my news today and the big news of the week shocked everyone in the crypto and NFT space. Discord went down. To be honest, it was quite refreshing. I'm not going to lie. It was <laughs> it was good. I felt like I got a bit of a filter out. I, I didn't feel the need to be in as many servers. I got a bit of a break from it and I had a nice time just relaxing and enjoying Twitter's <laughs> anarchy instead of Discord. Everyone ran to Twitter. It always reminds me of that. Do you remember that scene in The Simpsons where all the kids ventured outside suddenly? Yes. I think I sent that to about 12 different people as soon as it happened. But yeah, Discord going down literally is it's like, it's like all projects rugged because obviously every single project uses Discord to manage everything about your pro- about their projects anyone that was launching their project at that time was completely screwed it's a weird one though isn't it because i think it it shows the fragility of the system i.e using discord as a central server for all of the stuff you do um it yep. shows that it's kind of risky and um often you'll see a massive disparity in the activity on twitter and discord for a project they're never yep. in sync and yep. so i guess it shows how important it is to make sure you've got alternate outlets for your holders and potential holders I guess this means we, we kind of need a decentralized solution for all of these things because we're, well, we've got this decentralized communities that are fully reliant on a, on a centralized uh, bit of software that as soon as, as soon as it goes down, it's completely, it's, it's basically rugged to the entire space. Um, so yeah, so definite market gap there for someone, someone listening. We don't have time to do it over here. We've got enough on. Get us a decentralized Discord. Right, so massive news in the crypto nft space today literally dropped just as we come to do the recording um that yuga labs who are the owners of board eight book club they've actually purchased the um the rights to crypto punks and me bits um and they've added it to the the yuga labs yuga labs family they've said that um board apes is still going to remain as the centerpiece or the center of their um of what they do but they have now been able to give IP rights of CryptoPunks and MeBits to the holders and allowed them the same rights as uh, Bored, Ape, Bored Ape holders have. Uh, it's really interesting, actually, because this is something which punk holders have been asking for for a long time. There's a guy called Nathan Head, a British guy on Twitter, um, who uses a punk and has done for a year now as his, um, as his profile picture. And he was really excited to get that IP access because he's built a brand, he's 100,000 followers on Twitter, he's a fantastic photographer. So for people like that, this is incredible. But I also think for the space, it's going to provide a lot of controversy opinions. I've heard people saying, and again, it's tongue in cheek, this is like Solana buying Ethereum. You know, it's like <laughs> a really weird move because punks were the OGs and it feels a little bit weird that other labs yeah. would sell out like this. Um, but then again, ultimately, for the holders of punks and me bits, it can only be good, right? Yeah, it's a good thing, and I think it's um, going to be really good for the NFT market in general. I think it's going to start it open the floodgates a little bit of non Web three money coming in to purchase Web three brands, and I think you're going to see a lot more consolidation of IP within the space. There's going to be a lot more money coming in, which could also work as a potential um, onboarding ramp as well. So I think there's going to be it could signal the bomb as well, the bottom of this little mini NFT bear market that we've had. I think it's uh, it's definitely going to be a bit of stimulus. It's big, exciting news. People are excited about it. But I think you're right. There is a hand-in-hand contra- controversy because there's also been... You don't get it so much in NFTs, this kind of tribalism that you get in crypto and other, and other areas and industries. But there's, it does still exist. And a lot of people who own apes were very against punks. A lot of people that own punks were very against apes. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two communities actually now integrate with each other. The other thing is that this has been something which people have clearly known about for about a week now, because if you look at the price action on MeBit specifically, Mm -hmm. um, that insider trade, and it's a problem because if you remember with CloneX, there was that really, really well documented thread where a woman I've put all my life savings into Clone X, and it turned out that she was connected back with a team. So, yeah. as an industry, it's really again a really good point to remember that this this is so unregulated uh, that you know MeBits were were insider traded for a week before this. So yeah. you've got to you've got to make your own judgment calls one hundred percent. As what often is said in crypto and in NFTs that um, you know you shouldn't be selling, you shouldn't um, trade the news because that's already priced in. If there's ever some news or something that's going to happen, some big event that people are looking forward to, it's already priced in. 
Right, cool. Let's move on. So obviously, it's been a pretty up and down week in the crypto and NFT markets in general. Obviously, I'm not sure if you heard about it. There's a little bit of a war going on in Ukraine at the moment. Have you have you hedged yourself on this? Um, one of the biggest things for me is making sure that I have multiple investment strategies. Um, I think it's such a vague thing to say, um, but again, it's critical. Remember, everyone's different, right? So for me specifically, I'm privileged to have sold my business for a nice exit. So I'm going to be looking at buying a couple of holiday homes to rent out um, on a weekly basis. Again, I'm fully aware that there are better ways of making a lot more money. But for me, with my family and things like that, I like the idea of having ultimate stability, i.e. I know they're going to rent out. I know I'm going to get that yeah. money coming in. What I've also done, though, is I have bought the dip, which is normally not nice. my motto. That's I like buying yeah. the top of the knife normally. Uh, <laughs> instead, today, we're going to buy the dip. So I've picked up a cool cat, a doodle. Um, I could probably buy a Zuki today as well. Um, I've bought Thingdoms, bought more blocks, bought Dow Darcel. I've gone on a bit of a spree. Um, nice. I'm going to buy another letter. And the reason I chose to buy into those specific projects was that it was either things that friends have made or people that I really want to support, like Luke from Thingdoms, who's going to be on the pod this week, uh, or Harv from Blocks. Or it was projects like Cool Cats and Doodles where I just feel like I can put them away, forget that I've bought them, and I'm confident that when I decide I want to realise that, there'll be an opportunity to realise it at profit. That's been my strategy for the last couple of weeks. That's cool. No, I'm proud of you. That's great. You know, selling selling the pumps and buying the dips is what it's all about. I, I've kind of brought over my strategy of the kind of dollar cost averaging strategy that I had for for crypto, which is in, just investing um, small amounts over a long period of time and I, very much a zoom out strategy where I um, don't look to sell or buy or sell based on the market behavior because my 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 bet is on the market's going to be huge in five to 10 years. And that's hopefully where my, where I'm going to be sort of climbing out. I try and lad out a little bit, but, but not massively. So for me, I'm kind of just sat back at this at the moment and just kind of watching it happen. And I, I don't try and second guess the market too much. But obviously with this volatility, volatility, especially in crypto, is not great for the for the NFT market. And we've seen it multiple times when, when crypto is up and down um, in big swings the NFT market kind of takes a bit of a hit and, and, and often trends down into into a bear market. And I think we've definitely seen that. And I think really, for me, the turning point was that Zuckerberg sister dropping that Twisted Sisters NFT song that she dropped. That was the biggest top signal that I've seen in a long time. I liked it. I thought she had a voice <laughs> of an angel. You know, when you feel sad and lonely, that's the sort of music you put on to make yourself feel better about yourself because it's like, I am not this awful. You, know, yeah. you can put it on and just relax safe in the knowledge that you've not made that piece of music. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want me to talk about this really because I feel like my capacity is just to say, wag me, baby, wag yeah. me. Yeah, know? it wasn't kind of the reaction I was expecting. But I have to say, if you probably plotted on a chart um, tw Twitter engagement in, in, in the NFT space or NFT Twitter, um, you would see that actually the point that that dropped was like the pinnacle of engagement on NFT Twitter, and it's just completely dropped away since. So um, Kevin, I think she's I think she's got a lot to answer for, to be honest. Kevin, I'd actually argue. Kevin, oh Kevin, yeah. Oh, how's Kevin not on my list today? But yeah, Look, well, he was kind of he was like last week, wasn't he? But I feel like Kevin probably pipped her to the post. So um, another thing that was big this week that a lot of people were worried about, I, th I think it landed this week, was uh, Biden's executive order. Did you see this? Yes, I, I did a little bit of perusing. Yeah, so everyone was really worried that Biden was going to come in with some really strong regulation or increased tax or something like that on on crypto. And he basically just came in with something that was like pretty vague and just said that the, the US is going to look into into more regulation for, for the crypto space. Um, I don't think they're looking particularly to stifle innovation. Um, but interestingly, they said they were going to investigate doing a, C, a CBDC, which is a, a central bank digital token, basically a digital dollar. Um, and in fact, just mentioning that is actually just bu is bu is bullish for the space. And um, we definitely we saw a little spike up um, afterwards on Bitcoin. Um, so it ended up being pretty positive. Biggest thing for me, actually, is that first of all, in the UK, uh, a couple of banks like NatWest have been looking at doing a digital pound now. And it's going to be coming out within the next five years, supposedly. So that's not a new concept, at least in general. Um Unfortunately, for the space to evolve and grow, we need to get out of the incestuous bubble of four to 500,000 people at max trading. Yeah. If we want to take the space public, there are just literally regulations that 
trading companies have to have. You can't mm. get around them. You can't beat international law. Um, it just is what it is. And so yeah. I think that Biden and, and other world leaders will have to make some sort of comment on NFT yeah. and crypto because they ultimately cannot be seen to be doing nothing. You know, one of the biggest negative perceptions that's wrong about crypto, and again, it's not always wrong, people will launder money via it and NFTs, mm-hmm. is that, you know, if you go and ask an average guy, those are probably the things, if I showed him a $10 million board ape sale, not that has been yeah. one, but... I mean, I always find that hilarious them. because why would you tr- use a, a, a blockchain where Completely your transactions train, are yeah. always forever on the on the, on the the ledger to launder money? And what what do people normally use to launder money, which would be much more effective? It doesn't draw all this, all this fire. Cash, you know, they've been using it for years. What is used for crime all over the planet? The US dollar mostly, uh, unfortunately to say. But um, no, I agree with you that we do need to open this up to to Joe Public. And in fact, I was talking on our podcast last, uh, the, our last podcast and talking about that we need this this big giant onboarding event that is going to happen eventually to bring a lot of people into the crypto and NFT sphere and maybe CBDCs are the way for, way for that to happen. But it's again, it's another thing of us um, trying to onboard people into decentralization with a centralized with centralized assets. So, you know, there's pros and cons. Um, uh, it makes ugh, it makes me feel horrible just talking about uh, talking about these central bank digital currencies. But, um, but um, yeah, I can see the it, maybe maybe it'll help in some way. Cool. So one thing that um, has gone from being teased to being like right up in everyone's face this week has been uh, V Friends Series Two. Have you seen the new artwork for V Friends? I have. I have seen it, and I've seen the supplies. I think it's fifty five thousand, which is yeah. large. Fifty five thousand five hundred and fifty five. Obviously, with um, everyone who already owns a V Friend, they're going to get airdropped one of um, the. The, the like for like in the new collection um 55,000 is 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 a lot it's i mean it's I don't, there's lot. not many collections that are that high are there so um it's interesting to see what they're going to do to sort of justify that and how uh how their whole ecosystem that they're building is going to be because he hasn't done a bad job of anything has he i think everything that they've done has been uh has been successful and people have enjoyed it and they've got a huge amount of fans um so you know there's a market for fifty five thousand by looks of things as you say they're probably going to sell out so it, it's probably better for the space rather than d- people fighting for the death over ten thousand items and, and the price of them going up to ridiculous levels that so maybe being able to up the collection size um is important and i think we've talked about this previously is as the space gets bigger and as more people get into the space collection sizes are going to have to get a little bit bigger because if because for higher percentages oh it's going to be endlessly smaller percentages of people that are going to be able to get hold of a particular collection so i think we saw that especially with invisible friends for me that was a really good case of the hype around them was so much higher than the the amount um and the scarcity of them really drove those prices up um they could have easily invisible friends could have had ten thousand pieces without any issue. But um I think just to kind of finish off on, on, on the V Friends thing, Gary V was either asked or just replied to a generalized question of why are there so many? And he just answered with a simple supply and demand. There's yeah. absolutely demand for him to make more. Mm-hmm. And there's absolutely a reason for the supply to be there. It's a good way to look at it, and we're gonna see this a lot more with projects going forwards, but especially because otherwise the the whitelist games for these projects is just getting silly um and they're just making people jump through jump through more and more hoops to get onto whitelist and to be honest um when people are grinding for for weeks and hours and hours and hours for weeks and weeks and weeks to not get onto whitelists um is it it pains me and i feel like it is it's almost um disrespectful as well to the people that are in this space all right so moving on now i think i'm not sure if you would have seen this one in uh, in the crypto news this this dropped today and um it shocked me but i'm not surprised about it now 31 different nft projects are at risk due to a flaw in a smart contract written by yes. the same fiverr dev i think it's the uh, the star slab nft project um they had i think 197 eth um I'm not sure if it was stolen from them, but they, they lost it, basically. They can't access it now um, from their mint proceeds. And and it was identified that there's 31 other projects at risk because they identified the same the same author who was yeah. from Fiverr. What are your thoughts? 
we both bought Primate Planets, and I'm pretty sure that's one that's on that list of oh, is projects it? that yeah oh, wow. that, that have been affected. Um, and obviously, they were also tied to the controversy around the NFT account on Instagram that um, had a huge thread written about it about it essentially being a an advertising space that wasn't declaring adverts and things like that. So it's funny to see. Um, that the low risk strategies are so prevalent, i.e. let's just get someone off Fiverr. And that's not to say that the work on Fiverr couldn't be good, but no. for me, when I'm thinking about something like a smart contract. I just could never go to Fiverr for a smart contract. I mean, don't, I, don't get me wrong about Fiverr. I used to sell my animation services on Fiverr, but yeah, to get something as important as a smart contract on Fiverr and then not go and have it audited by, by like a consultant or someone else. Um, to find these issues um, or by decent auditor is is just scary. And I think, again, it kind of, it leads me on to our, my next point, actually. I just want to talk on about how how um, people are onboarding businesses into the NFT space. And it's about the um, the Premier League, um, the, the Premier League, the soccer, the uh, the football Premier League split over whether they want to do a deal for, for their own NFTs with a lot of, a lot of the clubs. I'm worried about how, um, firstly, um, the environmental side of things, and secondly, about onboarding um, their fans into a into an unregulated space where where their money is at, at high risk. Um, I think my thoughts on this is generally that there's an, again a, a lack of education in the space about some of the aspects of the NFT market um, for big corporations coming in. Um, there's a really hard route to market for a lot of these corporations that just the onboarding process as I say the barriers that exist at the moment are, are big and I think there's definitely a huge gap there for consultants um, and people good actors in the space to be able to help large corporations um, work out how they want to move in move into the NFT NFT I've said space too many times but NFT space equally though um, there is also a huge market to talk to high profile individuals right and i think um to touch on the premier league side of it i've been uh fortunate enough to connect with a premier league player who starts weekly for his club which is pretty cool and he's really keen to learn more about nfts and he's he's really embedded in the community he's not just here um like certain people have been john terry uh, for a quick cash grab he's here <laughs> to um collect he doesn't want to make profit he's not asked about making quick flips he wants to learn the market but that's very very difficult to do as you said because it's 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 there's no clear education on it. Um, you know, you can do what a lot of us have done, which is spend hours of researching and learning and developing and curating your knowledge. But if you want to um, not dismiss that process, but just understand so you can then grow and decide what you want to do, that's a really, really hard thing to get your hands on right now. And so I totally agree with you that it is a huge market for someone to come in and just create A, educational content that's really good at onboarding and B, just focus on getting those big businesses and big high-end net worth individuals to get the premise. So yeah, really interesting news uh, this week about Bianca Di Medici. I cannot believe uh, this story. I think it's one that is so important to the space to actually give the middle finger and the Vs to the celebrities that come into the space just to profligate and to uh, profit, sorry, off of the back of our hard work. Um, obviously, Sia announced that she was uh, Bianca de Medici, which uh, on face value is pretty cool. But yeah. when you see that she's actually super embedded in the culture and has done, she's done collecting in August last year. So, you know, fairly, fairly veteran of the space, I guess, you know, as we are now. But more importantly, it's that she owns hundreds of NFTs that she's taken time to buy. She's got clothes made with NFTs on. That That is exciting. Now, yeah. the big thing will be, do we get the Paris Hilton-esque, and now I'm releasing an NFT, Oh yeah, my God. gut feeling is that we don't because I feel like she's De one Medici of the Dow. first. Yeah, it would work. It would work, but she would be one of the first celebrities to, in my opinion, where my gut is saying that it's not going to happen, and that she just has genuinely fallen in love with the artistry of it. So yeah. I was pretty happy with that uh, crypto dad on her on her uh, on her she NFT dress. She yeah. did. I was pretty happy about that. No, it's good. I think again, any anyone that can help with um, exposure for the NFT market to to people outside of it, the more people we can onboard uh, into the joys that is the NFT space, the better. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm always up for that. 
Thanks for joining us for the NFT Roundup. We hope that you've enjoyed the first episode of it. Next week, uh, we actually have a special guest. Calcio is away. He won't be with us for the next couple of weeks. Um, We've lined up a load of podcasts, but for the NFT Roundup, we're going to be bringing in some special guests to help me present the weekly news. So look forward to that one. Hit the subscribe and like buttons if you haven't done already, and we will see you next week.